things about Saddam Hussein. He was holding Iraq together. You know, and if we didn't go into Iraq to get rid of Saddam Hussein, none of this would be going on right now. That's true. One of the big things also uh, that they were saying, and this is what I've been saying all along, is they're saying basically that we were lied to, saying that it was a uh, protest based on the videos. Well, that's what she said originally, but I think very quickly after that, you know, the truth came out that that had nothing to do with it. Yeah, but they they knew it. it was six days later before it came out. Okay. But they knew it all along that it well, wasn't. Well, you know, they, I hate to say this, but I I question sometimes some of the uh, some of the veracity uh, that that the supposed veracity that comes out of Washington. You know, I mean, they tell us what they want us to know, and yeah. and that's it. You know. Yeah, because they had taught they they had uh, they had a. The email that she sent to her daughter that night saying uh, it looks like an Al Qaeda type group attacked the, the embassy. And that was that night before anything. Well, before anything was said at all. And they were also talking about the fact that this group came well armed. It you know so I mean if it was if it was a protest about some video, they would have. You know, placards and signs. They wouldn't None. necessarily have guns. And tanks. You know. <laughs> pretty hard to hide a tank. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, just, oh, yeah, we're coming in with a protest with the tanks and the and the Toyotas. They all have Toyotas. They, have all, they all have the Toyota. Well, well you know, two songs you know changing, changing the, uh, you know, just digressing for a moment. Uh, you know who drives a lot of Toyotas? ISIS. That's why I said that. In fact, they're saying that Toyota could practically name a new car after ISIS. Yeah. You know, that's what they were talking about. They were saying it's the preferred vehicle of all terrorists. That's a selling selling point. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's a a good off-road vehicle that has enough... Cap space in the back to carry a heavy uh, machine gun or whatever. However, you got to ask yourself: Does it give you traction in the desert sand? Yes. Well, oh, that's yeah. important. That's yeah. important. You know, I don't care if it grips the road in snow because I don't think there's going to be too much snow in the Middle yeah. East. You know, but uh, and what did I say? One of the other things we discussed. Oh, oh we were talking about budgets. Now, the Rev informed me that uh, they supposedly had an agreement and then they didn't have an agreement on a a military budget. Well, I don't know if they ever had an agreement, but what what Congress passed was vetoed by the president. You know, I mean... uh, Which was the military budget. You got to give your soldiers, you know, uh, an increase in salary. I mean... You know, Obama's always talking about Jill Biden and the First Lady supporting uh, the families of our fighting men and women. And, you know, how, how can you not support, you know, a raise in salary to them? But then again, uh, I, le- I learned last week that because the economy is doing, and I quote, so well, and that there's uh, no inflation this year, that uh, Social Security is remaining stable. No one's getting an increase in Social Security. But I bet you Congress got a raise. Yeah. You know... Oh, by the way, speaking, uh, since we're on this uh, political vein here, uh, Rev, why don't you tell us who's in the lead in uh, Iowa now in the uh, in the polls? Benny Boy. Dr. Ben. Ben Carson at 28% is a full, almost, yeah, nine points higher, nine percentage points higher than Donald Trump. 
I'm curious to know what the Donald has to say about this statistic. He won't talk about it. Well, he'll talk about it when he's in the lead. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, listen, he's in the lead. Tell me one reason why I shouldn't be talking about it. And he's right. Yeah, and they said it's really no surprise. In fact, she's the one, by the way, Rev. Yeah. The one on the left that questioned her about uh, the emails to uh, Blumenthal and no emails to uh, Chris Stevens about uh, additional security. Yeah, I thought some of these some of these women were pretty tough. Well, they were all tough. You know, um, but look, the Republicans didn't score any real points. And mm -hmm. let's face it, this will, if, if Hillary is the presumptive Democratic candidate, Wait, she what? will have to face what? We, we, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. She will have to face these questions, you know, up until Election Day, really. You know, and it's up to the American people as to whether or not she has uh, sufficiently uh, answered the questions to the best of her ability without holding anything back. <coughs> well, I think our computer froze. I hope we're still broadcasting. Well, the iCodden wouldn't work if the computer froze. I don't know what's working. Let's see. Uh... Okay, that part is working. Hello? We're working, ladies and gentlemen. Luckily, I don't think what we worried about froze. Something else froze that we're not worried about. Okay, so what did freeze? Okay. I don't know what froze. But there's... Uh... There's more to talk about in politics. Paul Ryan. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, throwing his hat in the ring for the speakership of uh, the House of Representatives. Only if, only if he. No, they have. It seems that the Republican caucus has met his uh, requests. That's what I said. Only if they meet his requests. So, Whatever, you know, which is, uh, you know, he, he's going to be elected. Family time. He's not going to be doing a lot of uh, politicking on the weekend. To, and he, he, they're going to call him God. That the volunteers are going to be taking his children to school and taking his wife to work. Isn't it beautiful? Hey, look, you can't knock a man for wanting to spend more time with his family. No, not at all. You can't knock him for anything. If I was him, if they want me so I'm badly. I'm with my question. I'm just giving you the courtesy of reading your notes. That's all right. All right. Okay. There Let's... are people, frankly, in both parties who have suggested that this investigation is about you. Let me assure you it is not. It is time and it's time now for the Republicans to end this taxpayer-funded fishing expedition. I took responsibility. I only see a handful of emails to you from your senior staff about Benghazi. Well, Congresswoman, I did not conduct most of the business that I did on behalf yeah, she's of she's the one. Uh, our country on email. Please turn to tab 31. Well, I, right I, there. I, I trust that you have read it, but I also tell you that we had a presence in Benghazi. No. I talk a little slower than everybody else. so uh, the I question... lived in Arkansas a long time. Yeah, I, I don't need an I interpreter, Congressman. I think that's deeply disturbing. I think the fact that your, your team was meeting with I'm folks sorry, who... which team is this, Mr. Yeah, your t it would have been... We, we don't know exactly who... Well, it would be helpful. It would have been one of, the, one of your State Department employees, Madam Secretary. I don't know which one. So you can't be square with the American people. I wrote a whole chapter about this in my book, Hard Choices. I'd be glad to send it to you, Congressman. You know, I would imagine I've thought more about what happened than all of you put together. I've lost more sleep than all of you put together. One of the horrors of the hours after the attack 
was our failure to be able to find where the ambassador was. We thought things would be safe once they took refuge in the CIA annex. It turned out also to be a target for the militants. I want not just the committee members, but any viewers in the, in the public to understand that this was the fog of war. When Gaddafi himself is finally removed, you should, of course, make a public statement before the cameras, wherever you are, even in the driveway of your vacation home. You must go on camera. That was Blumenthal's admonishment to you. And I don't recall doing that, just well, in case you're going to ask me. Yeah, but I mean, look, the timing. This is not a prosecution, Mr. Schiff. You and I are both familiar with them. I've reached no conclusions, and I would advise you to not reach any conclusions either until we reach the end. Why is it that you only want Mr. Blumenthal's transcript released? Why don't you I'd want like the to survivor? Have all of them released. This, I don't care if he sent it by Morse code, carrier pigeon, smoke signals. The fact that he happened to send it by email is irrelevant. What is relevant is that he was sending information to the Secretary of State. I'm not going to take that up at a hearing. We'll, we'll take that Mr. up Chairman, in a business I've consulted meeting. with the parliamentarian, and they have informed us that we have a right to record a vote on that, on that motion. That was a three-minute preview. I guess it's not preview. I'm baffled. You sent Chris Stevens to Libya and to Benghazi. And granted, he never raised the flag and said, I want out. And granted, he never said, shut down Benghazi. And I understand and appreciate that you deferred to him. But you also, Madam Secretary, we have no record of you ever talking to him that you never talked to him personally after May of 2012 when you swore him in as our ambassador. Am I wrong? Did you ever talk to Ambassador Stevens when all of this was going on in the hotbed of Libya? Well, that is a yes or no question, Madam Secretary. I'm sorry. Did you ever personally speak to Ambassador Stevens after? We don't know the answer. Did you ever personally speak to him after you swore him in in May? I yes believe, or no, please? Yes, I believe I did. But and I, when was that? I, I don't recall, and I want to clarify for the record that this document is about all of Libya, not just Benghazi. Absolutely. I don't want anybody and to 77 be misled. And, you know, Congresswoman, I, I, look, I appreciate, and, and I really she, she didn't let up this the, woman. The passion and the intensity of your feelings That's about all right. this. We have diplomatic facilities in war zones. We have ambassadors that we send to places that have been bombed and attacked all the time. And you're and their boss. I, is that you're right. correct? You're right, I am. And you're and their we, leader. Is that correct? And is there, are there ever situations where you call them, where you bring them in, where you are personally caring and concerned and are letting them know that? Are, are there situations where you recall, and I'd like to know what the conversation was with Ambassador Stevens and what month it was with Ambassador Stevens, because there are no call logs with him. There's nothing from the op center with him that we have found. We have no record that you had any conversations with the ambassador after you swore him in and before he died, and you were his boss. I was the boss of ambassadors in 270 countries. I was the boss of ambassadors in places like Afghanistan, where shortly before I visited one time, the embassy had been under brutal assault by the Taliban for hours. I am very well aware of the dangers that are faced by our diplomats and our development professionals. There was never a recommendation from Chris Stevens or anyone else to close Benghazi. Well, that just about says it all, doesn't it? Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome, Madam mm -hmm. Secretary. Uh, welcome to. We're just the listening to some recaps. Select committee. This committee is the, the first uh, committee hearings. And individually interviewed We're cutting down from eight hours or nine hours to about. Time. Ten minutes, maybe Probably at the most. The Republican it sounds like the kind of show that we put together. Like the answers they got from those investigations, and they set them loose, Madam Secretary, because you're running for president. Can we play that clip, please. <laughs> 